I'm here with my Esawa because we will do a question and answer for him because he's been here in the Philippines for almost two years so I have a couple of questions that I want the, him to answer uh, regarding his stay here in the Philippines. So are you ready, love? I think so. Okay, that's good. So let's get started. First question. What was your first impression in the Philippines? That was February 3, 2018, yeah. my first visit here. And my first impression is I like the climate because it was not as hot as expected. And the traffic is a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> I remember we were in the van yeah. and I was the only person who fastened the seatbelt. <laughs> So no traffic rules, no seatbelts. Most of the people no, don't have a car insurance. So. No, but for example, if you're in a private car, tapos you're the driver, you need to fasten your seatbelt and all or whatever. But when I saw the traffic for the first time, I promised myself, you will never drive a car here. <laughs> but after almost two years, I would say, why not? Yeah. <laughs> it depends, not everywhere. I would never drive on Etza. But in the province, like yeah. like Cebu, El Nido, oh, uh, when we had a motorcycle ride, it's really good. There's no traffic, guys. <laughs> and no proper roads, but yeah. still. It's a good ride. No? Driving a car in Manila a is nightmare. a nightmare. <laughs> okay, next question. You've been here in the Philippines for almost two years now. How was it? How was your stay here? It's, of course, I tend to compare it with Germany because I lived there for 29 years. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't compare it. Of course. Because it's not just 10,000 kilometers away, it's also a different culture. It's a different religion, different people. Everything is different. different. Yeah. But I can't complain. Of course, some things are a bit more frustrating, especially government appointments or something. Yeah. But no, it's it's not an adventure anymore. The first couple of months, six months, everything was new. But now I'm used to it and sometimes it's still challenging. Challenging in what way? Ex visa extension, for example. I but they improve. Because I'm here for more than 60 months, that means I have to extend my visa in Intramuros, the main office. In my first time there, I was really upset yeah. because no communication, it was completely overcrowded. And we, we waited for a couple of hours and... Five. Five hours, but, but and we wasn't able to get... The and line. you had to wait outside. Yeah, and I had to wait uh, outside because the only person who's allowed inside is the one who's, who will uh, extend, the, extend visa. the visa. But the second time it was completely different. Relax. Relax with the appointment system. It took 15 minutes. So yeah. That's good. Improving. Okay, next question. What is it like to live here? It is more relaxed compared to Germany. In what way? A typical German, I think, is planning ahead, sometimes 10 years ahead. Probably the one, 10 yes. years? They are planning their retirement, or oh, I still have to work 35 years. Once I'm retired, I will move to the Philippines, for example. And I think the typical Filipino, how can I say that? In a, it's like Bahala. Na, you know? Bahala, na, yeah. That's it. Uh, as long as I can get home today, I have something to eat and something to sleep. Yeah. Who cares what will be tomorrow? Yeah, here because in the Philippines, we're living in like day-to-day uh, -day life, you know. They live from the hand to uh -oh. the mouth. Yeah, yeah, that's the right term. At first, in the first couple of months or when you visit the country, it is a new impression. You think, oh, life is so easy here, it's so relaxed. But if you live here longer, you will realize that the 
Bahala no attitude. Yeah. It's also a bit responsible, in my opinion, for the Papa TV. If they would plan ahead, if they would be more, more into saving off. In order to save, you need to earn money. It's a bit yeah, because uh, what they're earning is just enough for a day. You know? And the average salary per day is, at least here in Manila, about 10 euro. That's nine dollars per day, 550 pesos. And it's, it's minus good. transportation. Then sometimes you have to commute from home to work and home again four hours, five hours, then you have to eat something at work. Yeah. Minus the cost for transportation, you have five euro per day. Yeah. That's... It's kind of sad, right? It's kind of sad. You, it's not enough in Manila and usually not enough in the province. And not enough for economy, right? Yeah. Okay, next question. What do you think are the pros and cons in living here in the Philippines? The pros, of course, the weather. I mean, it's always summer here, even though the locals tend to say, oh, the summer is gone, it's... It's rainy season now. It's still, <laughs> it's still 29 degrees outside. It's still hot, no? It's always hot. It's all, for me, it's always summer. And that's one of the pros. The cost of living are cheaper compared to Germany, but the rent usually. The food, I don't know if it's... Living healthy here in the Philippines is really pricey. Right. The cost for vegetables and fruits. I mean, one apple here is 30 pesos, 25. Yeah. One apple. And fast food here is cheap. too cheap. Mm -hmm. That's why. That's why everybody goes there. That's why you will see a lot of people, also young teenagers, just missing teeth. And it's, chubby and, and obese. Right? <laughs> it's increasing, yes. Yeah, it's kind of sad because here in the Philippines, uh, living healthy will cost you so much than uh, eating cheap like fast food from the fast food chain. Because, for example, in Jalbi or in Bakdo, you have 50 pesos and you will have a meal already with drinks. And the other problem, it's always available. Yeah. If you're outside, so every 200 meters, Jollibee, McDonald's, oh, no. Burger King, uh, Chow King, yeah. Asta, but living healthy here in the Philippines is right. especially in Manila. Yeah. An Asa Pro, uh, the cost for transportation. We don't have a car, I don't want a car. Uh, riding a taxi or Grab, it's really cheap. The cost for transportation, like taxi, it's, you can't compare it with Germany. From here to the airport, let's say it's 10 euro converted in Germany it would be more than 100. More than 100? Yeah. Europe in a month? Yeah. So here in the Philippines naman, it's much cheaper the public transportation compared to uh, owning a car. <laughs> but if you imagine you are a local and you have to work, you live outside Metro Manila and you have to commute to work and you have to ride the public transportation. It's a nightmare. <laughs> It's a nightmare. And if you have a look while rush hour, if you see a bus, you can't even breathe in there. Because it's too tight. The normal capacity of a bus, let's say it's 30 persons, 150. Let's say the bus driver and the conductor, they want to earn more. And that's also a difference here. For example, in Germany, uh, the bus organizations are a handful of companies and they are, I don't know if they belong to the municipality or something, but there are two or three per large city and they have their fixed salary, they have everything. They don't care if there was one person or 100. And unlike here, it's, yeah, that's one of the differences. The people here really have to fight in order to survive. When I see something like that, I'm always happy that I don't have to yeah, work here like a local here. Yeah, another pro, the people here are really friendly. They usually always smile, but they even smile when they're in a bad mood. So it's more like a cultural thing. But they're always friendly. If you have a question, they will entertain you. They are able to speak and understand English. And 
Yeah. You will almost never see any grumpy people here. Even at Monday morning at the bus station or something. And like in Germany, especially when it's winter. Of course, I want to stay in bed. It's cold, it's dark. Uh, a con, something negative. Oh, something negative. When people think about the Philippines, it's a large tropical country with a lot of beaches, and they yeah. think you can do whatever you want, you're free there. But in reality, in my experience, no. Because no matter where you are, security everywhere. Each fast food chain has one or two security guards. I mean, of course, there will be new jobs for the people, but it's always... I don't know about the efficiency of the security guards. They will step with their wooden stick against your back. Yeah. It's more like a... <laughs> yeah. Okay, next. Okay. Do you miss Germany? I wouldn't say I miss Germany, but there are some things I miss about Germany. For example... Wait. Ah, okay. That's in the next question. So, what are the things you really miss in Germany? Dairy products. Bread. Also, but dairy <laughs> products, I love to eat yogurt and pudding and... Pork. Yeah. In a very cheap price. It's really cheap there and the, the choices are really... If you go to a typical grocery there, you have... You can choose between 100, hundreds of yogurts and really cheap. Hundreds of cheeses. A lot of different kinds of cheese, real cheese. <laughs> I mean, the cheese here in the Philippines, which really is just uh, plant-based somehow really with great. some spices. Yeah, I miss the dairy products. And you can buy it here also, but one yogurt, for example, 60 pesos, a small one. In Germany, a large one for, I don't know, 20 pesos. Probably. It's really cheap. And what else do I miss? Buying magazines. Usually when I do grocery shopping on a Friday, for example, I have a look. There is an aisle with magazines, newspaper, magazine, and so on. I will have a look at the computer magazines or something else. I will read a bit and I will buy it. That's my weekend. Routine, something like that. <laughs> something like that. And here, nothing. What else do I miss? Bread. German is, Germany is famous for... Rötchen. Rötchen, yeah. Wow. Germany is famous for its bread. And a typical German breakfast, by the way, is bread toasted or fresh bread. You, you can find uh, bread for toasting here also, of course. Also pan de sal and some other kinds. But it's sweet and it's soft. I like the... Bread in yeah, it's a bit more more Hard. crunchy and you oh. don't need to eat 10 pieces in order to get full. Because it's already heavy. So every time I will go to SM Tai Tai, I will make sure that I will buy something in French paper, like their baguette. Yeah, that's tacos. European style and that's they really have, like, They have the protein also. It's yummy. It's, it's really good. good. Uh -uh. I don't need that every day, but sometimes it's... What else do I miss a bit about Germany is the winter. I can't remember the last winter, real winter I experienced, but here it's always 30 degrees. Sleeping without air conditioner, forget it. And sometimes when it's so hot, the head will ache a bit. Yeah. And I want nothing more than two days, minus 10 degrees, snow, and then back to normal. But do you think your body is different now? I mean. For example, if we're going to visit in Germany, do you think uh, when when it's winter, it will be like it will be easy to get cold, or yeah. it's, it's the same? But then I think so. I mean, nowadays or here, when it's 23 or 24 degrees, sometimes it's cold already. Uh, what else? Mm, the social security. I mean. Even I have a German health insurance that covers everything, no matter how much. They don't pay here in the Philippines. And a typical local here, they don't have, maybe they have Phil health, they will pay a part of the hospital bill. But the social security system with retirement, with some other benefits, 
usually doesn't exist. Yeah. Okay, next question. This is kind of a controversial question. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Do you want to go back in Germany? Uh, maybe someday, not for now. Mm. We don't have concrete plans, but when the baby is here, not in the first years, but when it comes to going to school or something, then I think baby deserves to have a free and good education. Yeah. But we don't have concrete plans yet. But uh, we're planning, we're talking about moving in Germany something because there are a lot of benefits yeah. that the baby can get from the government. Like of course, the there is Kindergeld, kindergeld for example, that yeah. 12,000 pesos until baby is 18. Yes. Yeah. Imagine, guys, the government will support your baby until 18 years old. 18 years. And if you have 10 babies, you will get 10 times that amount. Imagine. So, uh, I have a feeling that there are some people, they're just creating babies and babies and babies and then and, and, and most, they're using yeah. the keep their girls to support their everything. Mo mostly forward. <laughs> yeah, there are some people who who just go to Germany for the bad things. But oh, that's kind of sad. But they're abusing the... But they're abusing the systems. Yeah. And the healthcare system, of course. Yeah. I mean, there was a family insurance. For example, I work full time, I have my health insurance that covers everything. The family is also insured, baby and wife. And if I got hit by a bus and my treatment costs, I don't know, 10 million euro. The family don't have to pay everything. No, right? you will just have your plastic card, show it, and they will do everything. That's, you know, the healthcare uh, system or healthcare insurance in Germany is really good because you don't have to pay anything you just need to show their the health card and all but you have to bear bear in mind also that you're paying for that yeah because they're deducting that in your monthly salary i think it's 15 percent of your salary plus additional 15 percent from your employer that's good here because you're in the philippines most of the people are just living from day to day life, you know. So, para if they're going to, to apply insurance or something, it'll cost a lot. So, we'll see it so, as unnecessary yeah, expenses. Unnecessary expenses. That's why Filipinos, lots of Filipinos, they don't have like a 10 year plan, just like Germans have or something. Yeah. And uh, the education system is free. Sometimes you have to pay some books or something, but nothing, no big expenses. No matter if elementary school, there is a different school system. The university, it's always free. And you can choose the university you want to visit. And that's also a benefit. See, here in the Philippines, if you want to go to college, you really need the money for it. You need to pay for it. And going to college here in the Philippines is not cheap, especially if you want a, a private school or something. It will cost a fortune. <laughs> That's why we're really thinking to move in Germany because we really want the best for our baby. The baby deserves it, so you. Yeah. yeah, but in a few years. Yeah, in a few years but... Next question. Okay, last question. Do you have any tips and advices for those people who want to move here in the Philippines? Hmm, don't wait until you're retired. I mean, life is now. And if you really want to do that, you will find a way. I mean, of course, a Fortwickner is not allowed to work here. And that's okay. I mean, local jobs should be for local people, means Filipinos. And, but there is always a way. And if you educate yourself, you can learn so many things online, like software development, graphic design, you can work in IT support, you can work as a German teacher. There are ways, and yeah, if you really want that, do it. But don't make the mistake to come here without any money in your pocket. 
and hope for a better life because there will be a painful punch in your face. Yeah. Do you want to tell them that you sold everything in Germany? <laughs> Just to... It wasn't that much, but okay. the most painful part was selling my comic book collection. I mean, I collected comic books for, I don't know, it wasn't that long, two and a half years maybe. But I had really good comic books. The first issue of The Simpsons with Signature. And yeah, I can't bring it here, so I sold everything. My furniture, my neighbor helped me. He got a part of the comic books and some furniture. Yeah, but in the end, before I came here, 30 years of my life fit in a yeah, suitcase one like that. One suitcase and then one bag. Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe it? He was able to fit all of his things in one suitcase and one bag. My whole life, but. The best part for me was sorting out all the things back in Germany. There were so many things I don't need and it's really relieving to get rid of all that, all the, all the unnecessary things you, you don't need. But it was really good. I, saw all, I had all the things I really need, my laptop, my documents, my some other stuff and then um, yeah, everything in the suitcase. But if someone really wants to come here, he should come here a couple of times for vacation and then decide if he wants to stay here for good. And not just sitting in the condo, so also seeing some other places. I mean, there are much beautiful places like Manila. Manila is it's an exciting city, but it's also loud, dirty, overcrowded and, you know, our stay in Manila is okay in the month. For one and a half for years. For one yes. and a half years, but living in Manila for, or living in a condo for a longer time. It's too small. It's too small. That was, there's a baby on the way up. And for us, it's not ideal. So we decided to look for a house. And luckily, we found the perfect house for yeah. us. But if you really want to come here, you will find a way. Everything else, in my opinion, is an excuse. And take note, guys. We met each other first meeting February 3, 2018. He moved here in the Philippines December 19. So, yeah. 2018 in the same year. So, he didn't... Uh, I didn't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. He didn't hesitate to move here. And I didn't and I didn't plan it. I mean there were I know someone who planned it six or seven years. I mean there was just yes or no. You want to move here, do it. You don't want it, stay there. Technically I came here without proper planning or without yeah, planning at all. But I had nothing to lose. I mean if it does if it doesn't work out, I will just go back. There was nothing won, nothing lost. It's like... Yeah, and look at you now. We are living here in the Philippines for almost two years already. Yeah. And... Yeah, and we have a baby on the way. <laughs> and looking back, or three years back, I could never imagine myself to sudden, suddenly be here. Uh, I mean, move in other country, no? Did you know, guys, that uh, he applied for a passport when he met me? Before, he doesn't have a passport, ganyan. he just applied when he met me. Because he decided to visit me here. Uh, October, October 2017, we met each other, and February 2018, we decided to visit me here, so a couple of months lang. And he was really, he was really brave that time because he already booked a flight without his passport <laughs> yet. That was, ayon. That's the time that he got his passport. Kenya, as in. Technically, yeah. I booked two flights before we yeah. even met each other. Technically, he booked, he booked two flights before meeting me. So, he's really 100% sure that I am in the world. 
ang ganda ko. <laughs> <laughs> so, ayun. So, yeah. You can really see that the guy is really serious about you. Ayun. He already booked a flight. And in his case, he booked two flights already. <laughs> That's why from that time, I, I was really sure that Yes, ma'am. Oh, I will ask you again in 20 years. Of course, my eyes are not going to change. Sound like. Uh-oh. Uh, thank you, love, for answering the questions. I know uh, some of the questions are kind of hard to answer yeah. because uh, Philippines and Germany are two different countries, but we still manage it. <laughs> I do my best. Thank you guys for watching. I think this video will be a bit longer. Yeah. But we will try to cut some parts so that it's not that boring. And see you the next time.